Good morning children. Today we are going to discuss about stars and the solar system. So in science from grade 3 you are learning about the solar system. Sun as the center of our solar system. There are different planets and stars. So we are discussing learning so many interesting facts about the solar system. In this class also in this standard also, you are going to learn some more interesting facts about these stars and the solar system. So we enjoy the night sky. If you have a clear night sky, when you go to your terrace in the night times, when there is a clear sky, especially during summers, we find a clear sky, there you can enjoy the beauty of this sky. The sky is full of stars. You can see certain stars are much brighter than the others and the stars they twinkle. Apart from these stars you see some other bright objects in the sky which are glowing but not twinkling like stars. There are certain objects which are bright but not twinkling like stars. What are those? Those are the planets. So what do you see in the sky? You see stars, planets, and satellites, that is moon. So the satellite that is which is very close, the satellite of the earth that we see in the sky is moon. We see a bright moon. We see stars twinkle. We see other bodies which are glowing bright. But those do not twinkle. Those are the planets. So the planets, they do not glow on their own. They reflect the light of the sunlight. So planets and satellites. Earth has got a satellite, moon. So that is the brightest object you see. The biggest, brightest object you see in the sky. It is bright. It is big. Why it is bright and big? Because it is close to us compared to other stars and planets. So moon is the closest object. The objects that we find in the sky are commonly called as celestial objects. Celestial objects. Heavenly bodies generally sometimes they are called as heavenly bodies but more technically they are called as celestial bodies. The celestial bodies include stars, planets and moon. So we enjoy the night sky. We see the stars, stars in patterns and we see the planets and we see the moon, the beauty of the moon. But here, do you find the moon in similar shape throughout the month? No. If you look at, if you observe the moon, day to day the shape of the moon changes. So is my statement correct? The shape of the moon changes? Is the shape of moon is changing every day? Is he changing his shape? Then why we do, why we see moon in different shapes? So the better statement is we see the moon every day in different shapes. Moon doesn't change his shape. The moon doesn't change its shape. We see the moon in different shapes every day. Why? In this lesson, we are going to learn why we see moon in different shapes and why the change in shapes happen day to day. Let us see. So now let us see the phases of moon. Phases of moon. What are the phases? We see the moon in different shapes. I told you that we don't see the same moon every day. Day to day his shape changes. Right? That means he appears in different shapes. His shape doesn't change. He is a spear. Moon is a spear as like the earth. Its shape doesn't change. But the shape of the moon we see is different from day to day. Sometimes you see a no moon day. You don't find any moon. You will see gibbous moon. You will see a crescent moon like a crescent shaped one. We see the moon in different shapes. Let us find out the reason why do we see moon in different shapes. Here I have a drawing to explain you 
how the phases of the moon are caused. These are called as phases. Let us see. Here is the year. I have drawn the positions of the moon. We know the fact that moon, it will revolve and rotate around the earth. So moon is rotating around the earth. As the moon is rotating around the earth, so there is some difference happens in the part which is shaded, the part which is brightened by the sun. So let us take in this case, here is the moon, here is the sun, the light of the sun falls on this half of the moon because the light is coming in this direction. If you keep a ball, the ball which is facing the light will be brightened at the back side of the ball, it is dark shadow. Now you see here, this is the way the sunlight comes, this part is bright and this part is under shadow. So even the earth also you know that half of the earth is in shadow that is night, half of the earth is in light that is daytime. So we are moving from light area to shaded area that is day to night. Days and nights are not coming, just we are moving on the earth to the bright side of the earth and to the dark side. So as the earth is revolving, yet sometimes it comes towards the sunshine, sometimes it goes back when it is under its shadow. So that is the night time. So in the way here, at all the times, earth and moon, half part is under sunlight, half part is under darkness, shadow. Right. But here I have drawn all the figures, half light, half dark, half light, half dark. But why do we see different shape moons? Let us see. See, for example, earth is here. We are at this position. You are at this position. Think you are here. This is the moon. So sometimes you may get a doubt that if moon comes across between the earth and sun, the shadow of the moon falls and eclipse takes place, solar eclipse takes place. You may feel that, yes, moon is here. I have drawn the moon here between the earth and the sun. So the shadow of the moon must fall here. So in my drawing, I'm not explaining the eclipse. As it is a 2D drawing on the board, I drew the earth here, moon here and sun here. These three are in the same plane, but they are not in that same axis. See, here the earth, here is the moon, just think. So if they are one after the other, if the earth and moon are in same axis, the shadow of the moon falls on the earth. But here, the moon is not exactly between the earth and the sun. So it is partly towards like this. So if this is the moon, this is the earth, the moon cannot cast its shadow on the earth. So this is the placement. This part of the moon is brightened by the sun. This part of the earth is brightened by the sun. This is the daytime. So with daytime, we cannot properly see the moon. We are at here in this position. So from here, the position of the moon is here. You are looking at the moon. This is your view. You are looking like that. So which part of the moon you are looking, you are watching? You are watching only the shadow part of the moon. So no part of the moon is bright. So your view will be like this. So this is called as new moon day. You're not able to see any moon. This is new moon day. Why you are not able to see the moon? Moon is here. You are looking at the moon, but you're not able to see the moon because the part of the moon which you are seeing is not brightened by the sun. You are just looking at the shadow part of the moon, the dark part of the moon. So moon appears totally dark. That is new moon day, Amavasya. Now, the moon is at this position after some three days or four days. You see this. You are looking at the moon like this. So you are at here at this position. This is your view. I'm drawing your view. When you are watching from this location, you will be able to see one-fourth part brightness, three-fourth part darkness. 
let me draw a moon shape with one fourth part one fourth brightness rest all dark let me dark this so now you are able to see only this part so you will be able to see a crescent moon a crescent moon because when you are looking from this direction when the moon is at this position you are able to see three parts which are dark one part which is one part which is bright you are able to see like this so if the moon position is here you are at this point you are looking at the moon like this so half part is bright half part is dark then you will be able to see the moon like this half dark half bright so your moon shape will be half this is the moon shape you see this is the shape of the moon you see here crescent moon here you can't see any shape so only the bright area will be visible as a specific shape so if this is the location you are looking at the moon from this point you see three parts dark one part one part dark three parts brighter so you will see a shape like this your moon will be like this because three parts bright one part dark if you are looking at the moon when the moon is at this particular position so you are able to see the moon the total bright half of the moon so then you will get completely moon visible full moon day it will take 15 days for the new moon day to full moon day it will take 15 days so in these 15 days gradually we will see a change in its shape because for every day the position of the moon changes because moon is rotating around the earth moon will take different positions every day how many positions he will take and how many days moon will complete his rotation around the earth in 29 days approximately so in this 29 days or 28 days he will take 29 positions so every day because of his position the part of the bright moon visible to us is different every day moon is visible but day to day what happens we are able to see the bright part some bright part some dark part right so the dark area of the moon and the bright area of the moon will be changed every day because it depends upon the position of the moon so moon will be rotating around the earth as the moon is rotating around the earth we are able to see that change in its shape the part of the moon that is visible to us it changes every day so from this new moon day to this full moon day it will take 15 days and again from here full moon day to new moon day it may take approximately 15 days together it is 29 days or 29 point some value this is called as one month so there is no exact calculation of one month in english calendar basically they make certain days as a one month january 31 days february 28 or 29 days likewise in other calendars indian calendars these are based on some kind of uh, uh, say these uh, heavenly body movements it it also will be approximately 28 to 29 days is considered as one month so approximately one month it will take for the complete rotation in this one month the position of the moon is changed all the times so when the position of the moon is changed the bright part of the moon which is visible to us also changes at this case we are not able to see any bright part of the moon because we are behind the moon so we see only the shaded part of the moon so no moon is visible that is called amavasya new moon day it doesn't mean that moon has gone anywhere moon is there but we cannot see why we cannot see because we are looking at the back part of the moon which is not having any lighting so the dark area of the moon we are seeing so we are not able to see any moon at this full moon day we are looking at only the face of the moon which is brightened by the sunlight so we see a complete moon but back side of the moon darkness we don't see because that is the view angle so it depends upon the view from which we are seeing the moon it decides the shape of the moon we see so these are called as 
phases of the moon right so the change in its shape whatever the change we observe day to day in the shape of moon that is called as phases sometimes when the moon shape is like this you call it as a crescent when the moon is half you call it as a half moon when the moon is more than half you call it as gibbous moon and uh, when the moon is totally dark you call it as a new moon when the moon is completely bright purnima you see the total full moon you call it as a full moon day right but there is no change in moon moon is like moon only thing is his position changes all the time day to day as his position is changing we are not able to see the moon completely means we will be seeing some bright part some dark part it will be changing day to day one day here the bright part and dark part will be equal you will see half moon sometimes the darker area of the moon we see is more than the bright area then you see a crescent moon sometimes when the bright area is more than the darker side then you see a gibbous moon so here we understood here the change what happens in the shape of the moon that we observe the shape change in the moon day to day is called as the phases of the moon it all happens because of the revolution of the moon around the earth the moon revolves around the earth so how many phases you see here we see around 29 phases because it will complete its one revolution in approximately 29 days we call it as a month one month that is around some 28 to 29 days approximately so the revolution of the moon around the earth it takes 29 days in this 29 days you will see some change in its shape here when you see that no moon moon is not seen that is called as a new moon day and sometime you see the complete moon so the time takes between from this new moon day to the full moon day is 15 days so again in the next 15 days the full moon day the full moon slowly becomes no moon or new moon so all together approximately 29 days or a one month of time right so here the phases of the moon is because of the position of the moon changing every day so this change is happening because of the revolution of the moon around the earth so the revolution of the moon around the earth when it is revolving the illuminated part and the dark part of the moon whatever we see every day it changes sometimes you see some illuminated part one fourth illuminated part three fourth dark part then you will see a crescent moon sometimes you see half illuminated part half dark part you will see a half moon sometimes you see more illuminated part less dark part then you will get a gibbous moon shape so this is all the phases of the moon is possible because of the revolution of the moon around the earth so let us see the moon's surface how is the surface of the moon so we see the moon as a bright object it is uh, gray to white in color and you will find some kind of spots on the moon like this some patches kind of thing on the moon till two american astronauts they were neil armstrong and the second one edwin aldrin these two american astronauts in the year 1969 according to indian time 21st july 21st july 1969 these two people they landed on moon neil armstrong he was the first person first human to set foot on moon till then we don't know much about moon moon is a celestial body for the poets and stories uh, tellers use it to write so many things about the moon but actually we don't know what is moon what is there moon till these people landed on so these astronauts they landed on they took the photographs they took the dust moon dust moon rock they brought it to the earth to study so moon is a satellite of the earth it rotates and revolves around the earth it rotates on its own axis and revolves around the earth it takes the same time to revolve and to rotate on its own axis the surface of the moon is covered by moon dust and rock it has got huge craters 
there are some patches like things huge craters depressions these depressions are happened because of hitting by meteorites there is no atmosphere on the moon atmosphere no air no water but what are there there are mountains there are mountains on the moon as high as mountains on the earth huge mountains are there but there is no water there is no atmosphere so the studies are going on even indians are trying to find out the atmosphere and other conditions on the moon and possibility of uh, for the existence of life on the moon so that is the surface of the moon so we have seen about the moon now let us see the stars so when you look at this sky you find the stars are very small tiny compared to moon it doesn't mean that they are bigger than moon the moon is very small you cannot compare the moon with star but as the moon is closer to us you see the moon as a bigger object stars as they are very far you see them as small ones so the closest star to us to the earth is sun sun is also a star so it is at the center of our solar system even though it is a star it looks like a sphere like a ball but you can't feel the other stars like that the other stars are like a small dot having the twinkling the twinkle is because of the scattering of light during the when it passes through the atmosphere they are also like burning huge balls of burning gases all these stars but you don't see them in a shape of a sphere you see them like a star as, as they twinkle but whereas when they are very close like sun you see it like a sphere sun is the closest star the stars they consist of huge amounts of gases like helium so they are burning emitting light on their own self illuminating bodies stars they emit the light on their own sun is the closest star to the earth so what is the distance the sun is a star at the distance of 150 million kilometers from the earth 150 million kilometers so that is the closest the next closest star after the sun is alpha centauri so the distances are very high between the celestial bodies as they are very high you cannot measure them in kilometers to measure them in kilometers you have to write so many digits so many zeros it is very difficult to represent so how do we measure the distance between the celestial bodies large distances between the celestial bodies is measured in light years light years so what is light year a light year means the light how much distance it covers in one year that is a light year the distance traveled by a light ray in one year is one light year how much distance it travels what is the speed of a light ray the speed of a light ray is 3 lakh kilometer per second 3 lakh kilometer per second so that is the speed of the light so accordingly we can calculate so how much distance is there between the sun and the earth 150 million kilometers but if you write in the terms of light year between sun and earth the distance is 8 light minutes not years 8 light minutes so that is the distance whereas you see the distance between earth and the next closest star after the sun that is alpha centauri alpha centauri so the distance between this earth and alpha centauri is 4.3 light years so that is the distance we find so large distances are measured in light years so we have learned some interesting facts about these stars that is the stars are very far away from the earth so the distance cannot be easily measured in kilometers so we measure them using light years so let us learn some more facts about the stars so when you look at the stars in the sky you see that the stars they seem to be moving so do they move from one direction to another direction actually we ourselves are moving on the earth because earth 
it is rotating on its own axis as the earth is rotating on its own axis we will be moving when we are moving if you see some object when you are in motion you are in on a bike or you are on a bus you are on a bus when you are on a bus as the bus is moving in a one particular direction in this direction so you are looking out through the window you will find some trees and all other objects so as you are moving in this direction you feel like all the other objects are going back backward in this direction in fact no object moves in the backward direction you feel it like they are moving backward direction as you are moving in the forward direction so that is the reason as the earth is rotating you feel that the stars are moving so in which direction the earth is rotating the earth rotates from west to east so that is the reason you feel like sun coming from east to west the sun rises in the east and goes to west that means the earth is rotating west to east so that is the reason you feel like the objects are moving the celestial bodies the moon or whatever the stars are moving but we will find some difference all stars are not moving with same speed why see because here is an activity to explain this doubt so there is an umbrella <clears throat> you have an umbrella with some designs some flower designs here so when this umbrella is rotated like this you are looking the designs these designs are under the umbrella you are looking at this view this is your view this is your view if you see that the center part of the umbrella whatever the designs are there at the center part they will be you will observe them like they are moving with less speed compared to the designs at the outer edges you feel them they are moving fast right so in this way depends upon the position on which you are located on this earth you see the differences in the movements some of these stars like pole star if this is the earth so this is the axis of the earth here is a star pole star so the earth is rotating in this direction so as it is rotating in this direction here this is the pole star irrespective of your position you find the pole star is located only at one place it is not moving because it is exactly on the top of the axis of the earth so that is the reason right so in the previous example if this is the umbrella whatever the pattern is exactly under this pole just compare this pole with axis of the earth you feel like it is only at this position but you see this this design it is rotating like this you feel like this design is going all around this design is fixed here in the same way this star you feel like it is fixed here these stars are going all around because difference in the position the pole star as it is at the top of the axis of the earth you feel like it is not moving but in fact the stars are not moving from their locations right only earth is rotating as because of the earth rotation and your position on the earth you feel like stars are rotating so their rotation is opposite to the rotation of the earth right but whereas the pole star as it is at the top of the axis you don't find that pole star moving so the pole star is fixed at the pole all the other stars are also fixed but you feel like they are moving because earth is moving right so now let us look at the constellation so we discussed about stars now let us look at constellation what is a constellation constellation is a group of stars a group of stars sometimes they resemble a shape people those who are closely observing the stars every night they find certain group of stars resembling one particular shape they compare the shape with the objects which are familiar to them which they know very well so on basing this they will name that group with a specific shape as a constellation so likewise we find different constellations in the sky right so among those there are certain uh, some constellations given here great bear orion cassiopeia leo major 
these are certain constellations now let us see let us discuss about a few constellations here the first one we are going to talk about the great bear this is also called as big dipper big dipper it is also called as saptarishi saptarishi means different names are given by different people at different locations people at different places they compare the shape with the familiar things to them whatever is familiar to them so that particular object will be compared with this groups of stars so here we see we find a collection of seven stars in the sky so the seven stars are arranged like this so it gives the shape of different things like see great bear some people they find it forms a shape of a bear so it is a group of stars among those there are seven prominent stars bright stars some people they form a shape like a dipper big dipper a ladle shape which is used to drink water right so there are three stars in its bowl or you can take four stars in the bowl and three stars in the handle of it some people they resemble there are seven rishis sapta rishi seven sapta in the sense seven seven monks are rishis so in this way they will find some resemblance to the real life object to the pattern of that uh, constellation constellation is nothing but a group of stars which resemble a specific shape that is called as a constellation so this constellation great bear you can see in the summer times in the early part of the night you can see this in the sky people who are in the northern hemisphere they will be able to see this better who are in the southern hemisphere they may not be able to see this particular constellation so now let us look at the second constellation that is orion it is called as great hunter because this constellation if you connect the brightest stars the eight stars that are found in this constellation if you make connections you will be able to see a shape resembles a great hunter so here it has it has got a three brightest stars here in this constellation three bright stars under one plane resembles a belt and this resembles the body of the hunter so here this is usually seen during winters that is the late evenings or early night part during winter season we can see this constellation so from this constellation we can observe or we can identify the bright star sirius in the sky sirius is identified sirius how the sirius is in plane with the three stars that are found in the belt part of the hunter so here we have three prominent stars these stars in the plane with this bright star series so by this we can make an identification so this is the orion constellation so the other constellation cassiopeia this is located in the northern sky it is also seen in the winter season during the early nights and uh, this constellation it has got a shape like this so this is like a letter m or like a little bit of distorted w so you can see this so this is the other constellation that we can see during the winter season now let us talk about the solar system so when you come to the solar system the system it consists of a star that is the sun which is at the center of our solar system around the sun that is the star around the sun there are so many objects are revolving which are revolving around because of the gravity between the sun and the planets and their satellites so let us see what are there existing in the solar system planets comets meteors asteroids and even the satellites of this planets if you see that the planets how many planets are there in our solar system so sun is at the center around the sun there are eight planets so which maintain some distance between them eight planets in the solar system so these eight planets according to the distance from the sun 
first we take mercury second we take venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune till 2006 we used to study about pluto also as a ninth planet till 2000 6 So in 2006 International Astronomical Union it removed the Pluto from the status of a planet because it has given a new definition for planet into which the Pluto doesn't fall the definition it doesn't apply to Pluto it applies to all the rest so thereafter we stopped studying about this pluto as a ninth planet we are learning that only eight planets are there in the solar system mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune so from the distance the first one is mercury second one is venus third one is earth fourth one is mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune likewise so these planets are revolving around the sun so their revolutions and their adjustments the distances and everything is maintained by the gravities between these objects the sun and the other planets so the first one the ma- main or the most important part of our solar system is the sun sun is a star it is a star i already told you the definition of star is a ball of burning gases so the star the sun it consists of gases burning so the sun is radiating sun is radiating what he is radiating the radiation of the sun it consists of light heat so we get light as well as heat from the sun not only for the earth for all the planets sun is the source of light and heat so the energy is given from the sun whatever the energy that is there on this planet whatever the energy that we are making use to survive in the form of food or in the form of fuel or in whatsoever it is all from the source solar energy sun without sun here we don't have the source of energy indirectly only the energy that is coming from the sun the radiation the whatever the light and heat that comes from the sun it is the source of all the energies that we have on this earth so on this planet so he is the main source of energy sun is the main source of energy we can say that right so this energy not only to the earth to all the planets it is supplied as it is at the center the light and heat it passes to all the planets but there is difference in the amount of heat and light received by each planet it depends upon the distance between the sun and the planet so now we are going to discuss about the another celestial bodies or the planets so we discussed about the solar system the solar system it consists of sun planets asteroids that is a meteors and dust and uh, it also includes the satellites of the planets so these are the various things that are found in the solar system so the solar system it contains the sun as its center sun is a star a huge ball of burning gases so the sun is at the center it is surrounded by some objects some spheres which rotate and revolve around the sun they rotate on their own axis and they revolve around the sun these are called as planets so in the sky in the night sky when you see the bright objects along with the stars along with the moon you will be able to see the planets also the planets which are next or close to the earth can be seen in the sky they are also bright objects why they are bright because they are also illuminated by the sun so as they are illuminated by the sun they are also seen like stars 
but the difference you find between the planet and the star in their brightness stars twinkle but planets do not twinkle do not twinkle just they glow but they do not twinkle like stars those are the planets so where are the planets the planets are around the sun do they all traveling in the same path no each planet has got its own path around the sun the planets they are arranged with some distance between each of the planet they have different distances from the sun some object some planet is closer next to that next to that there is some gap between the planets so in such a way they are revolving around the sun so now the planet is revolving around the sun in a specific path specific path this specific path is called as orbit so each planet has got its own orbit to revolve around the sun right so each planet it will take a specific time to complete one revolution it started at this point it's going this way to come back again here it will take some time the time is called as period of revolution period of revolution generally we call it as a year one year for the earth we calculate 365 days approximately to complete one revolution around the sun so just take the at the third position here it will take 365 years to complete one revolution the period of revolution it varies from planet to planet it is based upon the distance it travels so some are far which will take more time so depends upon the distance they will travel around the sun they revolve around the sun so the time period that is taken that is required to complete one revolution by a planet called is its period of revolution and the path the specific path in which the planet revolves around the sun that path is called as orbit so each planet not only revolving around the sun they themselves rotate on their own axis so planets rotate on their own axis at the same time they revolve around the sun so each planet has got its own axis own axis so they rotate on their own axis certain planets they have some other celestial bodies revolving around them the earth has got one celestial body revolving around it it is called as its satellite any celestial body revolving around another celestial body you call it as satellite the satellite of the earth is called with a name called moon moon is the satellite of earth so what is a satellite any celestial body revolving around another celestial body is called as a satellite moon is the natural satellite of the earth of course there are so many satellites revolving around the earth which are sent by humans from the surface of the earth into the orbit so we are sending so many satellites for communication for weather uh, weather prediction for all these various purposes we are sending artificial satellites so here the natural satellite is that moon cut so let us talk about the different planets and certain facts about the planets the first one we are going to talk about the mercury here the planet name is mercury in indian name it is called as budh so this mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system it is smallest and from the distance it is the first close to the sun as it is very close to the sun it is not visible properly because the brightness the glare of the sun covers this planet so you are not able to see it properly as it is very close to the sun so it is seen only during just before the sunset uh, sunrise and after the sunset you can see near the horizon to see that the area must be clear from trees and buildings so just like the places where you find some seashore like that where you can see the horizon 
and those point you can see this particular planet mercury it is small and close to sun and there are no satellites to this planet so this pl planet do not contain any satellites now let us look at the next planet next to mercury that is the venus venus is a neighbor planet to the earth because venus takes up the second position the first one is mercury and earth is in the third pos position so who is the neighbor here venus is neighbor to the earth in indian name it is called as shukra graph shukra so the size is it is bigger than mercury and comparatively smaller than earth so that is the size and appearance brightest planet it is the brightest planet usually seen in the sky in the morning and evening so it is called as sometimes it is called as morning star or evening star but actually it is not a star it is a planet it appears in the western sky so it appears in the morning just before the sunrise and just after the sunset it is uh, appeared in the sky and the venus it does not contain any satellites so no satellites and its rotation there is a little bit difference with the earth earth rotates from west to east whereas this one rotates from east to west that is the difference so this is the second planet in the solar system next we see the third one that is the earth so the next planet the third planet is the earth this is the only planet in the solar system on which the life exists the possibility of life and all the conditions atmospheric conditions that support the life the earth is covered by land as well as by water the earth is surrounded by an atmosphere which contain the mixture of gases so by that the life is possible here the earth appearance it appears from the sky in the space like a blue green planet the blue and green planet is because of the reflection of sunlight from this a uh, land uh, appearance of the land the greenery and the water the oceans so because of this light refraction and reflection different phenomena of light bring that particular blue green appearance to the earth so the earth has got only one satellite natural satellite that is the moon and the earth rotates from west to east it is bigger than venus in size and smaller than the next planet mars so this is about the earth so the earth is the third planet it is the blue green planet it has got the atmosphere water and all the necessities for the existence of life and the only planet that contains the life on which we are living it has got a natural satellite that is the moon revolving around the earth there are two more important points that we have to notice or learn about the earth is the earth it rotates from west to east west to east so that is the reason why the sun seems to appear like east the sun is traveling from east to west because the earth is rotating from west to east the earth it rotates on its own axis so this axis is not perpendicular to its path if this is the sun this is the orbit this is the earth here is the earth so the earth's axis is not perpendicular it is having a little inclination like this so not straight not perpendicular not a making a right angle it is making an inclination so this is the axis of the earth so these are the different important aspects about the third planet of our solar system the earth so now let us see the next planet next to the earth that is the mars which is called as mangal mangal grah that is the mars planet so mars planet because of its appearance reddish appearance it is called as a red planet it is next to the earth so we are very familiar with this mars scientist or experimenting scientist are sending probes to the mars scientists are planning to send people to mars to find out the conditions whether they will support the life or not they wanted to check out whether the life supporting conditions are there or not because humans they wanted to expand as a growing population needs land we occupy most of the earth and its resources are being used so we are in the identification of something else some other place so mars expedition there are certain organizations which are planning to send the people to mars many people are competing to give their name get registered to go to mars it is a one time journey one side journey 
वन वे जर्नी पीपल दोज हु आर टेकन टू द मार्स दे के नॉट कम बैक अकॉर्डिंग टू दट प्लान बट स्टिल दे आर इंटरेस्टेड सो पीपल आर वेरी क्यूरियस अबाउट मार्स बिकॉज एज इट इज वेरी क्लोज टू दी एर्थ सो देर आर सर्टन फीचर्स विच गिव अस एन आइडिया दैट लाइफ मे सर्वाइव इन फ्यूचर ऑन दिस प्लानेट मार्स दैट इज मंगल सो मंगल यान इज वन प्लान ऑफ अवर इंडियन स्पेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन and other space organizations international space organizations they are having so many plans to completely investigate the conditions on the mars and see that whether we can establish certain artificial conditions for agriculture or to make the life possible on that planet so mars is a red planet it has got two satellites so next to mars jupiter jupiter is called brihaspati in indian names so the jupiter it is the largest planet in the solar system it is the largest planet and it is equal to 1300 times of earth in size 1300 times larger than the earth you can compare the difference very large in weight it is 318 times heavier than the earth 318 times heavier than the earth it rotates very rapidly in its appearance it has got faint rings and it has got so many satellites with the help of a telescope we will be able to see that four largest satellites of this planet jupiter so now let us see the next planet that is saturn saturn is called as shani in indian context so indian name what are the features of this saturn so when you talk about saturn you will get the idea get the picture of saturn with number of beautiful rings around the planet so of course these rings are not visible to a naked eye with the help of a small telescope you can see the beautiful rings around this yellow planet saturn saturn is yellow in color with beautiful rings and it has a large number of satellites and one more important feature of this satellite is it is the very less density the planet with least density in the solar system its density is very low as low as lesser than the water so the density of this saturn planet is less than the density of water that means if it is possible if you bring this saturn and put it in the water it will float because it is lighter you know that certain things uh, float on water like wood it floats on water like cork it floats on water because their density is less than the density of water in the same way the planet saturn's density is lesser than the water this is all about the saturn so now let us look at the next members uranus and neptune so uranus and neptune of course including the saturn saturn uranus neptune so all these are outer planets so in the solar system the center one is the sun mercury venus earth this is a mercury venus earth after that we have mars so the planets that fall below this inside the orbit of mars what are they mercury venus earth so here the planets that come inside the orbit of the mars are called as inner planets mercury venus earth so look at their uh, position so they are not crossing the orbit of the mars they are inside the orbit of the mars those are called as inner planets the planets that are outside the mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune jupiter saturn uranus neptune these are all outside the orbit of mars these are all called as outer planets these are the outer planets what are the outer planets jupiter saturn uranus neptune these are the outer planets so uranus and neptune they fall under the outer planets the outer planets they have certain ring like structures around them and they have number of satellites more number of satellites the inner pla uh, planets they may have only one satellite one moon or no moon at all but whereas the outer planets they used to have more number of moons or more number of satellites so if you look at the uranus uranus is highly tilted rotational axis this is the earth its axis is like this some inclination 
If you take Uranus, its axis is like this. So it, this is the orbit. So when it is revolving in the orbit, it appears like it is rolling on its side because it is very much tilted. The inclination is very much 90 degrees tilt. See that very much tilted. So because of that, it appears like it is it is rotating on its sides. When you see the revolution of this particular Uranus, it is moving on its side. It appears because of its axis. They have a ring like system and many satellites. So all these outer planets, they have a ring like system around them and so many satellites. So that is about the Uranus and Neptune. So now let us see the other members of the solar system. We discussed about the stars, that is the sun, and we discussed about the planets and their satellites. So what else are there in the solar system? In the solar system, along with the, with the sun and planets, we see the asteroids, comets, and meteors and meteorites. What are these? Asteroids are the bodies, dust and rocky material that is found in the solar system, especially in the gap between Mars and Jupiter. Between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, there is a belt of rock and dust. So that is the rocky material is nothing but the asteroids. Now what are comets? Comets are also a part of the solar system. Comets are also the bodies that revolve around the sun. But their orbits are completely elliptical, very elliptical, very distorted. So they are not like the orbits of this earth. See, sometimes they come very close to Earth, sometimes they go very far to Earth. Say, for example, if this is the Sun, the orbit of a comet may be like this. See, so sometimes the comet comes very close, sometimes it go very far. The comet will be having a tail. Tail. So, as the comet is approaching the Sun, the length of the tail increases more. The tail is always away from the sun. That is what we have to notice. So in this way, the tail is always away from the sun. But when it is close to sun, the tail is much bigger. But when it is like this. So that is a comet. So the comets, they revolve around the sun in a highly elliptical orbit. One of such comet is Halley's Comet. They have some specific time period. So here the Halley's Comet for every 76 years it is seen in the sky. So it will be traveling a very long distance in a highly elliptical orbit. So it was last seen in 1986. So it will take 76 years to appear again Halley's Comet. So these are the comets. So the other things are meteors and meteorites. What are these meteors and meteorites? So these are also the rocky materials objects that are found in this solar system. Sometimes they enter the Earth's atmosphere. Due to the gravity of the Earth, they are pulled towards the Earth. So it is like a huge boulder of rock falling on the Earth. But here, the meteors, when they enter the atmosphere, due to the friction of the air, they start burning. So as they are burning, they appear as a streak of light like this. A streak of light going in the night sky when there is no moon, only stars are there, you can observe it. Some streaks going on. Those are nothing but the meteors, the, whichever enter the atmosphere, due to the friction, they will burn and evaporate in very less time. So they are not very big enough to hit the earth. They are small. So they are burned by the friction of the atmosphere. So they are called as streaks of light or shooting stars. With those names, it is called shooting stars. Sometimes, if the meteor is big enough, even though the friction is acting on, if it reaches the Earth's surface, you call it as a meteorite. You call it as a meteorite. So when it hits the Earth, it may form a crater. Sometimes if it is heavy, it may form a crater on the Earth. And these meteorites are helpful for the scientists to study about the celestial objects. Right? So these are the other bodies of the solar system. So in this lesson, we learnt about the stars, constellations and the other parts of the solar system, the parts of the solar system about the sun and about the planets and satellites, comets, asteroids, meteors and meteorites.